To start off our conversation, Mr. Timel, uh, we're seeing that a lot of volatility is happening around the world in terms of the economic activity, and a lot is changing, uh, especially in terms of exports. What is your assessment from your observations? What is your assessment of the dynamics surrounding global exports? Yeah, I, you know, it's uh, unprecedented uh, disruption and changes happening and a lot of uncertainty. Going back to my personal experience 44 years ago when we had to, when telephone calls used to take three days to get across between my market, which was the US and Sri Lanka. Magazines and trade fairs were the only, in fact, we didn't even have proper trade fairs at the beginning of our business. That's how we got educated and it was a regular thing. But today, you know, you can Google everything. Pretty soon, not only what was there with this artificial intelligence and all that, we'll be able to know what's happened, going to happen in the next year or two or even five years. And we can have a very good analysis of uh, the data. And all you have to do is really Google. And I've been telling people this uh, all the time. So I look at these disruptions as a, an opportunity for change. And I think the whole world is uh, ready to change. Our biggest export market, the US entire country is waiting for some kind of change. You know, this is the new trend adapting, collaborating, you know, these are the key words for the future, I think. A lot is happening around the world in terms of exports. We spoke about all of this and more with Suresh Dimel. Stay tuned. Some bonds give more returns, get more security and more interest on your fixed deposits from Sri Lanka's largest finance company, LOLC Finance. The latest issue of LMD is available at lmdmall.lk. You can also access the digital version on Press Reader, Maxter, our social media platforms and WhatsApp. The Voice of Business, a legacy of 30 years. Hello and welcome to LMD TV. The topic of conversation today is global exports and I'm here with the former chairman of the Sri Lanka Export Development Board, Suresh Dimel. Mr. Dimel, welcome to the show and it's lovely to have you with us. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. To start off our conversation, Mr. Dimel, uh, we're seeing that a lot of volatility is happening around the world in terms of economic activity and a lot is changing, uh, especially in terms of exports. For example, we're seeing that with the new president being elected to, you know, in the United States, uh, this is having many uh, ripple effects around the world. We're seeing that the export potential of some countries, of course, including places like Germany, are falling or supposed to. And then, of course, we're seeing the dollar rising against other currencies and then the U.S. is supposed to be, uh, you know, imposing more taxes on imports. And so a lot is happening um, against all of this. What is your assessment from your observations? What is your assessment of the dynamics surrounding global exports? Yeah, I, you know, it's uh, unprecedented uh, disruption and changes happening and a lot of uncertainty. So at a time like this, it's an opportunity as well for being a good entrepreneur because uh, we can think of innovative ways. And, and you know, um, going back to my personal experience 44 years ago when we had to, when telephone calls used to take three days uh, to get across between uh, my market, which was the U.S. and, and uh, Sri Lanka. And uh, magazines and trade fairs were the only, in fact, we didn't even have proper trade fairs at the beginning of our business. And, you know, magazines and talking to people, talking to consumers and, customers, you know, our shops and people like that. That's how we uh, got educated. And it was a regular thing. I, I made it a hobby and I used to go almost every weekend and visit a uh, fishing flies shop, which was my uh, background. And uh, so, uh, you know, that's how we learn. But today, you know, you can Google everything. You know, 
pretty soon not only what was there with this artificial intelligence and all that we'll be able to know what's happened going to happen in the next you know year or two or even five years and we can have a very good analysis of uh, the data and all you have to do is really google and i've been telling people this uh, all the time and uh, also something you know after the pandemic and all this disruption the zoom meetings you know we used to have skype but you know i may have used skype once a month you know we never used it uh, today this is regular once a day at least you know and uh, we are in touch i mean i am in touch with my uh, buyers a lot more than i ever was before um, you know so much so that i am not uh, too, so anxious to travel those days i used to want to travel all the time to uh, trade fairs and things like that which were quite expensive but nowadays you know during the pandemic and all that for 5 years i did not travel to my market and uh, actually i felt like i hadn't really missed much because i was in conversation with my customers and they may be called me more frequently also because of the disruption in the markets and uh, you know change of consumer trends changed you know and um, you, you see this is where you have to be focused on is those consumer trends and we'll talk about it uh, on the recommendations uh, section i guess and uh, yeah so uh, i look at uh, these disruptions as a as an opportunity for for change and i think the whole world is uh, ready to change our biggest export market the us uh, is the, you know the entire country is waiting for some kind of change and we can see the same thing happening in sri lanka political cultures uh, you know this is the new trend and adapting um, collaborating you know these are the key keywords for the future i think and if we are to look regionally here also we are seeing a lot of developments for instance we read that uh, bangladesh is um, you know bypassing india and then shipping its textiles through maldives so i mean that's just one example um every country really seems to be looking for more speed more profits and more competitiveness um what is your evaluation of the regional export market you know um this is a uh, obviously what we are going to be talking about uh, is just uh, outline okay the, e- each one of these questions will be a whole day's discussion to uh, you know there will be pros and cons about everything that i say i'm sure but in general the way i look at it is india is our market you know uh, the other markets are more complicated i mean if we can if we can manage the indian market then we can manage all the other regional markets india is the closest country to us and the largest by far global market the largest expanding middle class uh, it's right next door to us you know sri lanka india is such a vast uh, opportunity from the richest to the poorest market segments are there you know sri lanka in comparison even to india is a tiny place and we are now we are feeling threatened by the indian products coming to sri lanka we must now focus on how can we get sri lankan products over to india and because the market is huge right so if we can identify the niche markets in uh, in the region you know i mean i'm sure maldives has you know we are sending a lot of uh, food uh, fruits and vegetables and things like that to the maldives fresh uh, from sri lanka and that has opportunity to expand as the tourism industry expands and so on these cut the traditional exports will go on and, uh, for sri lanka rubber and coconut are, are huge uh, for the regional market tea of course we should be looking at uh, more uh, sophisticated than uh, higher level uh, markets but you know uh, even in india there is a good demand for ceylon tea and uh, we can of course they are producing it as well so you know you see we also like to buy things that are in from india sometimes yeah even though we have the same thing in sri lanka we like to buy so those are all very niche markets they are not uh, 
but we have gotten used to sending commodity to the region, to regional countries. And that, I think, is a challenge that can change. That's an opportunity that can change. Um, people ask what are the low-hanging fruit, uh, uh, fruits and vegetables. You know, if we we have in Sri Lanka today uh, about a 50% post-harvest loss in fruits and vegetables, and if we can have the necessary cold chains, you know, processing, transportation, uh, quality control, all that in place, a lot of that is the post, post-harvest technology. Sri Lanka is very poor on post-harvest technology. And if we can get that up to speed, we will be able to be the fresh fruit and vegetable basket for the other countries, for sure, you know. Uh, India is different when you compare India to the Maldives or India to Bhutan or something like that is different. So we must understand the differences, you know. There is no sort of one-size-fits-all uh, thinking in this. It's very... And, and as we see, our countries in the region will also be quite volatile. So uh, the trends, we have to keep an eye on the trends. And today, like I said earlier, with uh, e-commerce and, and uh, online information, you know, and today everybody has a smartphone, so, you know, all your information is there. And so we can, uh, but we have to think differently, you know, and uh, look at all the markets differently. We cannot sell everything to everybody. And that's something I think I... I want to emphasize in this conversation is uh, when we have to understand the different markets and and cater to those markets and and try our best to go to the higher markets. You know, we have the world's best tea, we have the world's best cinnamon, world's best rubber, world's best gemstones. So, but we have not achieved the results that that we should. You know. And uh, other countries are adding value to it and earning much more than than we are. Although the trend is that with uh, coconut and rubber, for instance, is diversified and they are sophisticated, uh, growing quite rapidly. We are we are almost now in a position, not almost, we are in a position now where we can uh, import. Uh, you know, there is synthetic the trend of synthetic rubber. So we will have sort of synthetic and natural rubber. We are the, you know, we are a top player in the natural rubber uh, arena in the world. So like that, we have different products that are uh, dominating world markets. And we need to focus on those world markets and produce for them. So regionally, yes, there is a lot of opportunity, but every country is different and uh, our opportunities are different. And like I said, you know, handicrafts, uh, soap, you know, those small items like that can be superb uh, small and medium enterprise exports to those countries and uh, from the region. And um, and uh, with our tourism, I hope that people will, will uh, start doing more, uh, more of that kind of uh, manufacturing. And of course, coming to Sri Lanka, um, you know, our exports have, I would say, the sector has been been through the mill more or less in the last couple of years. Uh, but what's the situation looking like now? Yeah, first of all, this is a global situation. Why I'm saying that is uh, that there is a tendency in Sri Lanka to think that this is a local issue. Now, in order to solve a problem, you have to understand the problem first. So if it is a global issue, then there are a lot of things that we have to study and uh, adapt to and get used to uh, in the lo- in the marketplace. And exports means we are working with the global economy, right? So after the pandemic, uh, it's natural, there was a slowdown for two to three years in, in lockdowns and slowdown. And that uh, will take a few years to uh, stabilize, you know, that disruption. And then in the middle of it, we have this trade uh, trade shifts going on, right? And that's also natural. I mean, we, you know, we can we can look at uh, how many countries uh, are in the playing field today. You know, 
then sri lanka our export renaissance which was a late 80s and 90s we were sort of in the region and in, we were a big player in let's say take the apparel industry we were a big player we 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 were competing with japan taiwan and countries like that today we are competing with bangladesh you know so now even in the apparel sector now the apparel sector must not be confused with other sectors but the apparel sector has been so successful because they also went into the niche market in apparel and uh, this is something you cannot o- overemphasize like i said that we have top business people go into the apparel sector at that time and we were able and and there was a exports were recognized and felt like a national priority that seems to be uh, uh, our issue is that we haven't i believe that we haven't given enough recognition to the export sector while you know even during the pandemic when i was uh, heading the export development board uh, we were breaking records we were we were year on year export uh, there was progress between i mean 21 and 22 were growth years for for exports you know so when i'm looking at that and 20, 2024 is one of the record years uh, in our exports so this whole thing we must not get into a negative uh, idea you know sri lanka has been resilient through a lot of our exporters have been amazingly resilient throughout this uh, these crises and uh, that doesn't mean we need to have crises going forward but uh, what we need to do is to understand why we cannot do more and for this uh, you know stable politics stable policies uh, policy inconsistency un- unpredictability you know those are transparency um those are the key words today in in global recognition and improving our image okay we don't have a very good image for being a, you know maybe sometimes our news uh, the media also doesn't do any justice they talk more about the bad things in sri lanka than the good things so um i mean that's why i am encouraged to come to uh, speak uh, in for our where i have an opportunity to talk about the positive side of uh, of this that we can and we are doing you know it's not uh, i'm not uh, fantasizing in any way because uh, you know i mean we had 2008 2018 were the, you know those were the best years in our exports and i and 2024 might be now and uh, like that we need to look at the positive side and and keep on uh, you know the important thing is matching um, supply and demand so um, here yeah, we can talk about that uh, also uh, i think it's time to take a very short break but we'll soon be back to talk more about global exports display your brand message on digital screens at prime locations at prime locations the largest digital advertising network in sri lanka in sri lanka emerging media welcome back to the show we're in conversation with the former chairman of sri lanka export development board suresh dimel And Mr. Dimal, what is your message to local exporters on how we can boost growth uh, in terms of the sector in 2025? Yeah, I think uh, the most important thing is for our exporters to understand that we cannot and we do not need to export everything to everybody. And uh, this is my broken record. Uh, what I would like to repeat is, you know, which means, you know, find the better markets in the world for whatever product you are going to uh, sell and the trends are changing for sure and then focus on those markets and and uh, export now another important thing i have to understand is a lot of people say we don't have the information and it's uh, 
uncanny how many people come to the export development board without even checking the export development board website. Um, I still talk to a lot of exporters who are looking for markets and asking to understand market trends and things like that. All that information, most of it is on, on our websites in the Export Development Board. And uh, if the information is not there, the, the staff, the officers at the Export Development Board are qualified to search, you know, do a desk research. They, they, they are in contact with uh, the embassies around the world and they can get that information if it is not online. Uh, and we can also validate the information on, on what is online. We can validate it uh, through the embassies, through the foreign embassies in Sri Lanka. We can do a lot of research. So, you know, our SMEs should not feel intimidated about not having that information. And I hear more, more often than not them saying that only big people have the opportunities and small people don't. But I think small people are not reaching out enough. And uh, I would say the easiest place to go to would be the Export Development Board, where there are officers who, who will be happy in every sector. And then there are specific uh, government agencies for tea, rubber, coconut, you know, who are more specialized in that. And, you know, another thing that needs to happen is the collaboration between government agencies and the private sector. Now, we had, uh, during my time, we had 16 ministries that were working on agriculture. And uh, all of them I had conversations with, uh, because, uh, you know, if you wanted to talk about land for development, you had to go to the Ministry of Irrigation, Ministry of Lands. If you wanted um, finance, you had to go to different places. If you want, I mean, all the things that an entrepreneur needs to develop an agricultural project. There will be 16 ministries that they have to be, that have to work together, right? And then the people also need to understand the difference between the agricultural ministry and the plantations ministry. Unfortunately, the mandates of each of these ministries have not been outlined properly. There is a lot of overlap. And the overlap also happens when the consumer goes to the different ministries, asks for something. Then the ministry feels obligated that they need. For instance, somebody goes to the agriculture minister and asks, uh, I need to find out about exports of uh, coconut to India or something like that. You know, and that's really not the mandate of the agricultural minister. But then it's a waste of his time because there are other agencies that have already done that study and it's published and it can be uh, explained in context. And so that that kind of uh, mismatch and, and confusion is quite chaotic, uh, in fact, you know, and then that needs to change. And there needs to be a lot of collaboration between the private sector and the public sector on that. Because I notice that sometimes the private sector also has multiple ideas and, and the government then tries to implement multiple ideas, different agencies. So then again, there is a conflict and an overlap. And so we need to come on the same page. And that's the importance of strategies, you know. Now we have a, we, we put together a national export strategy uh, 10 years ago. It got all messed up because of the COVID and all that. Then we need to be able to adjust that strategy to go forward. And of course, there was a lot of uh, private sector participation in that strategy. Now only, you know, there needs to be a lot more space for private sector participation because the government also, you know, government is not, in, in general, is not an entrepreneurial entity. So they um, need to understand the private sector. Uh, attitudes and needs without complaining about it you know private sector has to be sustainable we have to be profitable and uh, that's not a sin to make money so these attitudes between uh, public sector and the private sector has to change that uh, i think going forward is not only the job of the government but it also is the job of the private sector to help the government to adjust to these new trends i mean it, it, and most of the time in Sri Lanka, we find that the governments are a little behind times. Today, one year is a long time ago. Okay, Things that didn't change in 10, 20 years, changing in one month in, in the world today. 
and with the adoption of new technology and so on agriculture you know global exports means competition and today there are world trends in technology that are, are you know we are leapfrogging uh, many uh, circumstances today and and countries are doing great amazing things you know we have the traditional on one side but the new innovative modernized technologies on one side sri lanka is doing that but too slow we have to accelerate that uh, if we are you know we are an agricultural country we still have a lot of opportunity and i will always again say niche market agriculture you know and i i would love to mention this you know one of the most the greatest opportunity Healthy, you know the most healthy in the world and the country has to celebrate that and the government also needs to work with the stakeholders bring them together and and have an accelerated program to market ceylon cinema once a year at a trade fair marketing cinema is not going to make a difference okay the result is that people must sort of understand what this cinnamon gi means now if we take white wine and champagne it's basically the same thing if you close your eyes and drink that only a connoisseur can tell the difference however champagne sells for a lot more money than white wine and the reason is the geographical indication if it comes from champagne it is champagne in the next district it is white wine so this is the importance of of sri, sri lanka and the beauty is that sri lanka as a whole as the whole island has got geographical indication so we have the necessary transparency we have the necessary product you see there is no you know it's for for hundreds of years maybe a thousand years sri lanka was uh, known as the cinnamon capital of the world let's not use the word spice but there has never been a country uh, that has be known for cinema as much as sri lanka but the world's best cinema where do we export it to 80% of it goes to mexico mexico is a third world country there is a huge demand for it in europe and in america however unless we maintain the physical quality and in cinema the most important thing is the physical processed quality okay feeling rolling that's most of the quality of a uh, cinnamon stick is in the peeling and rolling and that's how you grade it the higher grade is the one that has been peeled thin and of course in plantation you have to grow the cinnamon in a way that you can do that easily and you have to train the staff to do it like that because they can earn five times more money you know three to five times more money if they if they produce it uh, to that quality and also it's a sustainable business because the tra- tradition is to pay half the proceeds to the producer the, the farmer and the, and actually the peeler so the, the the supply chain also can benefit and and uh, we can get a, a higher price i mean just like uh, value added tea or whatever and we we have to now create uh, that ceylon cinnamon brand and get it out in the market uh, as a high value product and sri lanka is a small island again you know when you look at the world map we we don't need to supply the entire world we can just find the lamborghini markets in the world and supply to those we don't need to look at other 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 markets for most of our product because you know we are not uh, a country full of labor we are not a country full of you know with large extents of land yes. so we should uh, be careful about comparing ourselves to countries that have that labor force and 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 land and unfortunately we continue to do that mm-hmm. we are a extremely niche country and we need to if we want to continue to be the best of in anything we need to focus on on exports and exporting niche products and improving the value of the supply chains and uh, i also wanted to mention that the government agencies also need to focus and have a clear mandate on the supply chain development which is the most important thing today people with niche markets who are producing have shortage of labor and shortage of quality of raw material 
shortage of land. So we have to be very careful because we don't want to disappoint customers. You know, supplying the big supermarket chains in the world is not a, a comparative advantage for Sri Lanka. That's not something we should be celebrating because, you know, again, you go to that trader mentality instead of an industrial mentality. And if we do not have the volume, let's not uh, let's let's uh, put that volume into value as it added uh, exports. We've been in conversation with the former chairman of Sri Lanka Export Development Board, Suresh Dimal. Mr. Dimal, thank you for a very insightful and very interesting conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. And thank you to all our viewers for joining us. Until next time, take care. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram and X. Thank you for watching and stay safe.